this Godot tutorial, you will teach NPCs how to chop wood, plant trees, and transport boxes by using behavior trees. Download the project from GitHub. All the links to the tutorial can be found in the description of this video. Open the Godot project that you will find in the extracted folder. There is a scene with a couple of buildings, each owned by a villager. The villagers themselves use a navigation agent 2D, which was newly introduced with Godot 3.5 to do physics-based pathfinding. On the bottom right is a ferry captain who eagerly awaits boxes to be loaded onto the boat. These boxes need to be transported by the trader. Where are the boxes coming from? Well, the lumberjack needs to chop these trees and move the boxes of wood over to the stash area. At some point, all the trees will be gone, so we need a forester to maintain the forest and plant new trees. When pressing play, you will notice that the villagers currently don't do anything really. Let's get started and breathe life into our little goblin village. Before we can create the AI logic, we first need to talk about behavior trees. The main goal is to separate concerns and every node should only do one single thing. In the context of behavior trees, there are so-called action and condition nodes. An action node will do stuff while a condition node is just checking for stuff. Each of these leaf nodes return a status code that can either be successful, failure or currently running. Actions and conditions alone help us to create instructions. However, we also need branching logic to decide when to execute a particular action. So-called composite nodes come to the rescue here. There's a sequence node that runs all its child nodes until one of them fails. There's also a selector node that runs all of its child nodes until one of them succeeds. There can also be long-running actions that require either a sequence star or selector star implementation. They will exclusively run a child node that is currently running and skip all other ones until that child finished running. Lastly, there are also so-called decorator nodes, such as failures, succeeders, limiters and inverters. For our purposes though, we only need to know about the inverter, which inverts the result of a child node. Inverters turn a successful code into a failure code and vice versa. We do not have to write this entire logic ourselves. I created a Godot add-on called Behave that you can find on GitHub. The project has this add-on already pre-configured. Now that we have covered the basics, let us create our first behavior tree. The lumberjack should leave their house, walk to the closest oak tree, chop the wood and pick it up, carry that wood to a stash and then placing the box onto the ground. Rinse and repeat. Head to the lumberjack in the scene tree and you may spot that it has a behavior tree scene attached to it. Jump into the behavior tree scene and it should be completely empty, apart from a small script that is used to inject the stash area node for further processing. We want the actions to be executed in sequential order and we want that long running tasks like chopping wood are executed first before continuing the sequence. Therefore, add a sequence star node called chop wood to the scene. I already created a bunch of action and condition nodes within the AI folder that we can use to compose our logic. Let us start by adding the leave house action and the walk to closest tree action. Starting the game should show that the NPC suddenly starts walking to the closest tree. Next up, we need to chop the oak tree. Add an action called chop tree action and add two additional actions, walk to stash action and place box action. Before we can try out the complete flow, we have to wire up some of the nodes. Both walk to stash action and place box action, expect a variable of type stash area to be set first. To make our lives easier, Godot 3.5 comes with a new way of identifying nodes by a unique identifier. Right click the two nodes and tick the box axis as scene unique name. Then within the lumberjack AI script, define two new on ready variables and access the nodes directly via the node access modifier. Make sure to prefix the name with a percentage sign. After set the stash area to those nodes in the ready function. Starting the game now should show how the lumberjack does their job and delivers boxes as expected. Once the stash is filled up, the goblin doesn't really know what to do with the leftover box. Let's teach the NPC to rest in their house instead. Rather than always executing the actions, we should only execute them when the villager isn't required to rest. Let's reorganize our behavior tree. First introduce a new selector node and call it either. We want to run child nodes based on certain criteria. The lumberjack should enter the house and rest if there is no free stash space available or if there are no trees left. To do that, we will start by adding a sequence and call it wait. Then we check for the conditions. Condition nodes should always be truthy, so a condition should check if something is true. 
not false. So in order to check if there is no tree to chop, we decorate a has grown tree condition within an inverter node, so it becomes a has no grown tree condition. The same applies to checking for no available space. Wrap a has free space condition node within an inverter node and call it has no free space. The has free space condition needs to be assigned to a stash area as well. As before, tick the box access as seen unique name, define the onReady variable within the parent behavior script and assign the stash area in the ready function. Now that we have the checks in place, we can add the rest functionality to the wait sequence node. This is a reusable scene that consists of a selector, a status check and a sequence star of actions to walk to the house and enter it. Lastly, we only have to move our existing chop wood sequence into the either selector node. When starting the game, the lumberjack will chop trees until there is no free space left and will enter the house as expected. The boxes that are placed in the stash area should be somehow transported to the ferry. This is the responsibility of the trader goblin who should pick up a box and carry it to the ship. Like the lumberjack, the trader has also a behavior tree attached as a child. We'll go ahead and create a similar setup to the lumberjack. We start with a selector node as a root with two children, a sequence node called wait and a sequence star node called deliver goods. Let's add some actions to the sequence. Leave house, walk to stash, take box, walk to location and place box. Make sure to tick the box access as seen unique name on the relevant nodes that require the stash area. For the waiting logic, start off with a selector node that can decide if the goblin needs to wait. In case the ship has not arrived yet, the ship has no free space left or there is no box to pick up, the goblin should enter the house and rest. Like earlier, we'll utilize the inverter node and wrap the has ship arrived condition and the has stash free space condition. We need to be careful now, the villager can carry a box while there is no further box available to pick up. In this case, the villager should continue their job and avoid resting. To achieve this, let's add a sequence node to the wait selector condition and call it no box available. Then we wrap the is carrying condition via an inverter and only check if stash is empty when there is no box being carried. Do not forget to mark the has ship arrived, has ship stash free space and is stash empty conditions as access as seen unique name in the settings so we can access them easily within GDScript. Lastly, we again add the rest scene as a node to the wait sequence. Before we can test our behavior tree, head into the trader AI script and define the relevant nodes as on ready variables via the unique name access method. Then assign the stash area object to the following node. Walk to stash area, take box and is stash empty. Assign the ship node to the has ship arrived action. Remember, there are two stash areas, the one in the village and the one on the ship itself. Let us assign the stash area from the ship to the has ship stash free space and place box on ship. Lastly, we need to specify the dock position by assigning it to the walk to dock node. When starting the game now, the villager should start picking up boxes and loading the ship. Once all boxes are delivered, the villager will rest in the house. The hardest part is now behind us. We now need to ensure that the forester plants new trees. In case there is a tree that is chopped, the forester goes ahead, plants a new tree and waters it. If there is no other work to do, the forester returns to their goblin hut. As usual, start with the select a either node and add a sequence node called wait and add another sequence star node called plant tree. Within the plant tree star sequence, add the following actions, leave house, walk to closest tree, plant tree and water tree. Make sure to mark the type of the walk to closest tree to chopped, otherwise the forester will attempt to walk to the closest grown tree, which is not what we want. To ensure that the villager does only wait based on a condition, add within the wait node a selector called needs to wait and the rest scene node we previously used as well. All we then must do is to wrap a has chopped tree condition within an inverter. Let's call it has no chopped tree. Once you start the game, the forester should leave the home as soon the lumberjack has chopped a tree. Lean back and watch the little goblins work. Use the spacebar to swap between them. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments what other things you would like to learn. Do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more game dev stuff.